This one is just psycho in a in a good way. <laughs> so good. <laughs> it's yeah. insane. Yeah, I and, was I, I submitted this one. It's from Murray Livingston. He's out of Scotland. Um, does um, primarily black and white photography, uh, almost entirely. Um, I believe mostly film, but I didn't quite check all those finer details there. But thumbing through his his um his portfolio that day, I came across this one, and I was just like, "Holy smokes, what are we looking at here?" Um, and then once you finally kind of sunk in, I was just like, "Wow, that is really something." He calls it macrocosm, which I just struck me as a great, um, uh, a great name for it. Um, and uh, yeah, just the the the, the time uh, element is really key here. Um, that spinning of the bubbles, uh, which looks like bubbles, not leaves, um, in combination with the softness of the flow, is is just yeah, that's a really special scene that he he caught here. Yeah, this one's just nuts. When I first saw this and you sent it, Jimmy, I was like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Never seen anything like it. If uh if this was like submitted to the Natural Landscape Awards, I bet it would get some kind of award, unless those guys are smoking something. <laughs> <laughs> they're on, they're they're on the gummy. <laughs> they're on yeah. the gummy. The gum train. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is just incredible. I love the, you know, it's like an intimate scene, but it has a foreground and a background. It's It's got this crazy depth where like, I'm sure we're looking at like, from what I can interpret, we're looking at like a, you know, a cascade from the top of it and it's going down. So you can't see it going over the lip. And then like down below, there's the foam spiraling around, but it just feels like so compressed in the way that he framed it and shot it. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's, really insane and the black and white is perfect for it too it's pretty sick i mean just i gotta follow this guy if I'm not already oh yeah definitely yeah. follow him he puts i mean consistently putting out great work this is it's a little bit different than what he normally does but yeah. i mean it's yeah it's still a, a lot of like yeah it certainly does yeah he looks like he's got great stuff yeah instant follow for sure i regret i don't remember how what he's shooting with i didn't i didn't dive into that but it's making me, you know, think we're maybe looking at a field camera, possibly. Um, just that incredible depth of field you can get with the mm -hmm. shift. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that that could be it. Because it seems like this would be a tough one to focus stack with like the texture of mm -hmm. the water and like uh, mm -hmm. everything, you know, the moving elements and things. So. So they can change the plane of focus by adjusting the the front element of the lens. Oh, thanks, Jimmy. I had no idea how I tilt shift. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about you, Eric. <laughs> no, one, no one was for Paul. I don't even know if Paul's yeah. a photographer. Yeah, he just likes once, beer. I don't know once why in he's a while. Here. Uh, once in a while, I got to get back in the game. The, so yeah, the, only, the only thing I'll add about this photo that I, I definitely appreciate is I think in this scene, it would be easy to focus on one thing or the other. Um, yeah, it almost feels like two below. separate images, but he, mm -hmm. he can join them so well. Because usually that's exactly. something that bothers me when I see an image yep. where it's like, you should have just made two photographs like this. Yeah, this bottom of the frame has nothing to do with this top half of the frame. That That's exactly mm -hmm. how I felt about this one, but it works, which is so impressive. Exactly. It would be so easy to focus in on one or the other, make the composition just about one half or the other, but it just works so well together. And, you know, to be able to see that, um, you know in the field and, and compose it and make this image is yeah definitely definitely talented 